Here, you need to take your chance. 1988, Batadens Carthage. After winning in its first attempt in 1987, Peugeot deployed just as impressive an armada in 1988. Vatanen, Kankunen and Pescarolo were backed up by a 60-person team to assure another triumph for the French car maker. At the end of stage 13 in Bamako, Vatanen was in the lead and the domination was conclusive. But the following morning, the bivouac awoke to a confusing rumour. Ari Vatanen's 405 T16 mysteriously disappeared from the Parc Ferme. At this point in the morning, no one knew much, but there were some solid clues. The placid Finn looked concerned, and Peugeot team director Jean Tot spent all his time on the telephone. The car theft of the century had taken place in Bamako. <coughs> Jean, just before you left, can you tell us briefly what happened this morning at the hotel and how it happened there? What happened is that at 7h15, I received a phone call from my house where the standard passed a person who passed another person who was apparently a European person. As the helicopter was taking off, the 405 was found in a public garbage dump on the outskirts of town, but further details were sketchy. Everyone was perplexed at the start of the special stage. With the absence of Vatanen, World Rally champion Juha Kankunen was the new leader. The most Machiavellian of rumours were already circulating. Peugeot itself had orchestrated the car's disappearance to better carry out repairs. It must be said that the fingers pointed at Peugeot were those of the jealous. And just as Juha Kankunen took off, the 405 was finally found. Five kilometers after, you know, after the bridge, forward the, the airport, yes. in, a, in a field. In a field? Yes. In a field? Not even a house? No. And, uh, and that's it. <laughs> it's uh, really crazy. <laughs> the whole story is just incredible. It's really like in a film. What happens now with the race? I think if, if it is true that my car has been found, I'm sure the race continues. And uh, just a uh, lot of harmless, harmless, I emphasize, publicity. And that's all. Car is good. Very that's good. good. Okay. Good. okay. <laughs> Harry Vatanen took back his car in perfect condition. To this day, the disappearance remains a total mystery. The fin was allowed to start despite missing the cutoff point, albeit with a 30 minute penalty. He was disqualified the following day. Juha Kankunen went on to win the Dakar. 1992, the vintage Wadi. In 1992, Gilbert Sabine wanted to breathe new life into the Dakar. For the first time, it would not finish at Dakar, but in Cape Town, South Africa. This radical change of route offered some unusual circumstances. Between Namibia and Ruakana in Angola, Ari Vatanen's co-driver Bruno Berglund jumped into the water to measure the depth of the wadi. Just a few hours earlier, it had been completely dry. First and second in the motorcycle class, Stefan Petterhansel and Danny Laporte made it through. The others hesitated. Berglund tried to show the way if indeed there was one. Then the medical car ended up trying. But soon it became clear the efforts to get the Kajiva and Yamaha across were not easily achievable. A surprising scene. Petter Hansel, Laporte and their teammates were stuck on one side of the river while the others waited calmly on the other. The special stage was stopped, some took off, 
and a solution was needed to take the two motorcycles to the other side. On peut les troyer avec le. Ils ont un. Avec les tangos Ouais, mais. Euh... Et l'hélico, vous ne pouvez pas les troyer avec les troyers C'est possible avec l'hélico Moi, je m'en vais parce que c'est peut-être un peu lourd. Ils hein. n'ont pas vu ce qu'on vient pas de In 1992, Stefan Peter Hansel won the second of his six Dakar motorcycle victories, thanks in large part to his performance on the Congo tracks that would soon become legendary. But it was perhaps at the edge of this wadi in Angola that he was the most worried. <laughs> The impossible erg. This area goes by an ominous name, the Triangle of Dead Dunes. The bikers arrive first to tackle this 28 kilometer long valley of dunes that no one had ever crossed in competition. In 1994, the Dakar went through a change, with ASO taking over the organization. Fenui was the new race director and there was an all new route with the finish to be in Paris. And this 11th stage from Atta to Nouadhibou was the highlight of the rally. On the 9th of January, Jordi Archerons, Eddie Orioli and Carlos Mars were the cream of the crop in the bike division. And their concerns didn't forecast anything good for the other competitors. Ahead of the obstruction, the bikes turned back, whereas the cars arrived to try their luck. They didn't get on much better. The two Citroën ZXs of Pierre Latigue and Hubert Auréole dominated the overall standings. And the two Mitsubishi Pajeros of Bruno Sabi and Jean-Pierre Fontenay contested their supremacy. In the middle of these terrible dead dunes, a battle between the two constructors began. The race still hadn't been stopped. The Mitsubishis tried to cross the uncrossable. For their part, the Citroens decided to circumvent the obstacle and incur severe penalties. This duel put to bed one of the most extraordinary episodes in the history of the rally. Also, one of the most unjust as well. Race director Fenui was alone to face his decision. Hubert Auréole and Pierre Lartigue headed towards Nouadhibou. All the other competitors went around the Erg. And when night fell, only Sabi, Fontenay, Cerise and Musmara were still in the middle of the dunes. Citroens arrived at the bivouac at 04.30. In the early hours, the Mitsubishi mechanics still had no news from their drivers. 
At first light, the helicopters took off once again and their occupants discovered a confusing spectacle. On foot, the two co-drivers, Sir Ace and Musmara, were still tracing a path for the two Pajeros. On sait, je sais pas, on s'en savait peut-être 200 fois. 200 fois, on a ressoulevé la voiture. C'est fou, c'est fou. Finally, at two in the afternoon, the four men turned heroes arrived at checkpoint eight. Meanwhile, the FISA cancelled the stage. Sabi, Fontenay, Ceres and Musmara's tribulations were for naught. Team manager Ulrich Bremer withdrew the two Mitsubishis from the race in protest and gave his exhausted men a rest. Unfortunately, in 1994, the rules spoiled the advent. 